This video did not go at all like I was expecting it to. I bought an ARC A770 GPU, installed it in my test PC, and was ready to play some VR games and see how the A770 performs, and as I go to launch Airlink, I see this. It turns out Oculus officially only supports NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. At this point in time, Intel's ARC GPUs are not supported in the Oculus software, and when and if they will be remains to be seen. I don't think they're in any hurry to add support though, because taking a look at the December 2022 Steam Hardware Survey, which is the most recent survey at the time I'm making this video, there is not a single Intel Arc GPU on the list. Just because they aren't officially supported doesn't mean it doesn't work at all though. Thanks to Guy Godin and his virtual desktop app, I was able to run several games and get an idea of what kind of performance the A770 is capable of in its unofficially supported state. Now, if you've seen any of my other VR graphics card benchmark videos, for those, I use the performance overlay in the Oculus debug tool. Since the A770 is not officially supported though, I was unable to use that tool. So instead, in this video, you'll be seeing virtual desktops performance statistics overlay. Also, virtual desktop doesn't give you different render resolutions to choose from like the Oculus PC app does. You instead choose based on what graphics card you have, from a potato all the way up ultra. to ultra. So yeah, for Beat Saber, I was able to select ultra graphics quality at 120 hertz in virtual desktop. And in Beat Saber settings, I set the render scale to 1.5, turned MSAA off, turned smoke and screen distortion effects on, and max shockwave particles to two. For not having official VR support, the A770 performed really well. It was almost always a few FPS below 120 as I was playing, but gameplay was smooth and Beat Saber looked sharp and crisp. Oh, I should mention, my test PC is rocking an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D CPU, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3600MHz CL16 RAM, and of course the 16GB Intel reference model of the ARC A770. And as is recommended to get the best performance possible out of the A770, resizable bar was enabled. Since Beat Saber worked fine through Virtual Desktop, I next fired up my favorite VR shooter, Contractors, leaving the Virtual Desktop settings the same. And in Contractors graphic settings, I set everything to high, except for anti-aliasing, which I set to low. At these settings, again, the A770 did well. It wasn't quite able to hit 120 FPS at these settings, but it did stay above 100 FPS the majority of the time. So I turned the refresh rate down to 90 Hertz, and just to see what would happen, increased the in-game graphics quality to Ultra, and the A770 delivered some very solid performance. 90 Hertz at Ultra graphics quality in both virtual desktop and in-game were not a problem. With the success of those two games, I decided to try firing up Steam VR and see how the A770 handles Half-Life Alex. Initially, I was able to load into the game just fine and navigate the menu, but as soon as I tried to load up a game, that's when everything went wrong. The game locked up and eventually crashed out to the Steam VR home environment. To make sure this wasn't just some one-off fluke, I tried loading up Half-Life Alex half a dozen or more times after this, and every time it crashed. Sometimes I could get to the menu again, but other times the game would act like it was going to start up, but would then lock up and crash before ever getting there. Based off its performance in Beat Saber and Contractors, I'm confident the A770 can run Half-Life Alex just fine. But I don't know who needs to update their software to get it working properly, Intel or Steam. I'm guessing it's Intel though. Anyway, I wasn't able to get Alex to run at all, so I decided to see if this is a Steam VR problem or simply a Half-Life Alex problem. I then fired up Assetto Corsa, and on my first attempt, things did not go well. So I tried again. This time I was able to run the in-game benchmark in VR just fine, which is the footage you're seeing right now. But when I tried to actually queue up a race, it would fail the load and I'd be kicked back to the Steam VR home environment once again. I tried at least a dozen times to get a race started, and every time I was met with some kind of problem. Sometimes it wouldn't recognize my racing wheel and pedals, and other times the race would never load. After about an hour of messing with it, I just decided to call it. I then tried Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it exhibited similar issues to Assetto Corsa. To be fair, when the game starts up, you do get a warning message saying your computer does not meet the minimum requirements, and that you may encounter some issues. So yeah, there is that. 
The main problem I had though was when switching to VR mode, sometimes it would switch over fine and others the game would lock up, leaving me in this infinite waiting loop. One of the few times I was able to get into VR and queue up a flight, I had virtual desktops of graphics quality at medium and the flight simulator settings as listed on screen. As you can see, I got about 50 FPS in this training flight, but I should draw your attention to the bottom right corner of the performance overlay as this was with synchronous space warp active. Turning it off cut the frame rate in half, meaning the A770 was only able to muster around 25 FPS on its own at these settings. But again, the majority of the time I wasn't even able to get Flight Simulator to run in VR. So yeah. At this point it was looking a lot like the A770 and Steam VR don't like each other all that much. So I went back to my Oculus library and tested out one of my favorite VR games from last year, Red Matter 2. Unlike the Steam VR games, it ran great. Uh, I was able to set virtual desktop's graphics quality to ultra and the refresh rate to 90 hertz. In Red Matter 2's graphics settings, I set the resolution scale to 1.1 and turned both indirect and dynamic shadows on. With synchronous space warp disabled, the A770 kicked out an almost perfect 90 FPS throughout all my testing. I did see it dip down close to 80 when I was playing around with the reflection of my scanning tool laser in this window but the game still ran smooth and looked great in the headset. Keeping the settings in virtual desktop the same, I then tried out the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners and was able to set the pixel density to 100% and all the other settings to ultra, except for anti-aliasing, which I turned off. As you can see, the A770 had no problem at all with this game. There were fairly frequent dips down into the 80s, but just like Red Matter 2, overall, the game both looked and ran great. The last game I tested was Lone Echo 2. To get this game to run at what I feel is an acceptable level, I had to lower the graphics quality in virtual desktop to medium and the refresh rate to 72 hertz. As for the game settings, I set most things to high, but rather than go over them one by one, I'm just going to list them on screen so you can see them. Overall, the A770 kept the frame rate at our target of 72 FPS. In some parts of the game though, the frame rate did fall down into the 60s, but the frame times remained consistent because while playing, I didn't notice the change in frame rate really at all. Even though I was able to get some VR games to run with the A770 and run pretty well in some instances, it probably goes without saying that I would not recommend buying one for PC VR. At least for now. The fact that there isn't any official support for VR at the time I'm making this is a huge knock against the A770. Yes, it can run VR games, but having to purchase a third-party app in order to run them isn't all that exciting, I'm sure, for most people. And the simple fact that Steam VR games are basically unplayable at this point means your money will be much better spent elsewhere. Subscribe!